belongs only to the holy language. Obviously, he did the best he can. If you take a hundred people to translate one chapter from the, from the Hebrew Torah, there will be differences in the words. Why? Because some names in foreign languages, it can be translated in different ways. So we have to stick to the original way. But I'm going back to what I started. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, it says, Do not think I came to contradict the Torah and the prophet. I did not come to contradict. I came to fulfill. If heaven and earth will be canceled, not one letter from the Torah will be canceled. Not even one yud. If one person will erase one letter from the Torah and will come to, to teach that to others, will be cursed in the kingdom of heaven. This is Matthew chapter 5, and my question to Danny is as follows. To the best of my knowledge, I do not know Christian people today that I observe, observe the Sabbath. I don't know Christians that keep kosher like we do. Maybe there is, but I do not know. I do not know Christians that put a feeling it's definitely not a part of everyday religion for them. So my question to you is like this. Based on your introduction, you called Yeshua from Nazareth, you called him the Mashiach. Later I know that you're going to describe him as the Son of God. And the question that I have to you is like this. If the main figure in Christianity, which everything is around him, which you call him the Messiah, if he wrote in the book, which you quote, it's your source, not mine. It's the New Testament, which we, the Jews, never accepted as the truth. We contradict that book. We only believe in the Torah. We never believed, and we will never believe in the New Testament. The reason is, you're going to understand in the next hour that we have, why. But my question to you so far, and that's the first question for tonight, please explain me if the book of Matthew comes and bring a quote that this is the word of, of Jesus to his students. How is it possible that close to one and a half billion people today do not listen to their Messiah, to their hero? Thank you for that question. It's a very good question, and I appreciate the fact that you're asking an important question. You know, not just a question that deals with the translation of a word. And I, I just want to reaffirm what uh, Joseph has been saying, that uh, there are many areas of agreement between his position and the position which I'm going to present, which I believe is the Christian position. And so several of the things that Joseph said is it's about knowing and not simply believing. In fact, it's a misunderstanding of what the New Testament says. Yes, the New Testament says, believe. But Jesus says, if you look at what believe means within that context, Jesus says, I do many miracles so that you might believe. Now, what that actually means in context is, here's the evidence. And I'm giving you this evidence that you might know who I am. So we're both agreeing about the, the significance of evidence. That's very important. And we also both agree that the, if the New Testament can, can even begin to be considered as the Word of God, it must fit intimately with the Old Testament. If it doesn't fit intimately with the Old Testament, something is the matter. So that brings us to the question in Matthew 5, the Sermon on the Mount, and what Jesus was teaching. And let me, let me read you the entirety of that quote. Now, I'm not going to read off the whole Sermon on the Mount, but notice in verse 17 what Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the law of the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Uh, Rabbi Yosef was saying, well, how is it that Christians do not follow the law of Moses? And they don't put on to fill in. Well, Jesus said that uh, he didn't come to abolish it. The law couldn't be set aside. We know that clearly from Tanakh itself. But what he did do was fulfill it. And the evidence that we have, there's much evidence, in fact, that the Christian looks at, that something would follow the Mosaic Covenant. In fact, let me read you a few verses. 
the first verse comes from Jeremiah 31. It talks about a new covenant. And there are many, many verses in Tanakh that talk about a new covenant. And this one goes, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant with the, uh, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. My covenant which they broke, though I was a husband to them, says the Lord. There are many citations I can make within Tanakh itself that a new covenant would come and the conditions under the new covenant would be very different from the conditions under the old covenant. Let me just read you from the prophet uh, Hosea. Hoshiach, is that how you say it? And he... Hosea. Okay, this is from Hosea 2, 18-19. In that day I will make a covenant with them, with the beasts of the field, with the birds of the air, with the creeping things of the ground. Bow and sword of battle I will shatter from the earth to make them lie down safely. I will betroth you to me forever. That means marry, by the way. Yes, I will betroth you to me in righteousness and justice and loving kindness and mercy. Now, I want to point out about that particular prophecy that the conditions that Hoshea, Hoshea, do I have it right? Uh, the conditions he's pointing to are conditions that are radically different from the conditions that were experienced under the Mosaic Covenant, or Brit, Brit, Mosaic, Brit. Anyway, in the Mosaic Covenant, the Jewish people couldn't even come into the presence of God. Only the high priest... The, the, the main Kohen could come in, and that was in the holy place only once a year. There was hardly any marriage. In fact, we saw at Sinai that the Jewish people, when God spoke to them from the fire of Mount Sinai, they were terrified, and they trembled. And they said to Moses, or Moshe, they said to Moshe, you just tell us what God wants us to do, we'll do it. But as for listening to this God, we can't do that lest we die. So what we find are conditions very opposite when, when, we, when we're talking about the New Covenant, very opposite of what we find under the Mosaic Covenant. Thank you. Okay, I'm afraid that you did not even touch the question that I asked you. I mean, you gave us something from Jeremiah, which I'm going to re respond to. This is what you said. Uh, but before I, I repeat your quote, I would like to ask a question. This is my question to you. If a person will come and show up in this room and tell us he's Eliyahu Anavi, Elijah the prophet, and he came to tell us about the salvation that is on the way, right? and we're going to ask him, Mr. Eliyahu, can you prove to us that you are Eliyahu? And he say, what do you mean? The Bible said that God said that I'm going to send you Elijah before I send the Messiah. That's a proof that I am Elijah. What would we say to this person? Would we waste a second with him? Okay. To come and take the text as the Christian church did and read and write a story based on some of the verses that appear in the Bible to match their needs and to match their goals that's not a proof, that's not a scientific proof, because I can do it just as well as they did. My, what you quote in Jeremiah, this is what it says over there. It says like this, it says, I'm going to bring the from the land of the north and gather them from the lands, blinds, cripples, Frightening, giving birth, large crowd will return here. This is talking about returning to the Holy Land from all the exiles. They will come with tears, and I will lead them. There are days who come, and I will renew the covenant with the Jewish nation, not 
as we received it for 3,300 is so far, but until this is going to happen, we are going to establish it this time for eternity. As you know, the Jews never, unfortunately, all of the Jews in the world did not stick to the laws. And many of them are not aware of most of the laws. But this time it will be for eternity, which will mean that this covenant that we're going to make is not possible that it's going to contradict what we receive in the Torah. Why? Because in many places in the Torah, and I'm sure you heard it many, many times, the Torah says clearly, this is the Torah for you and your children for eternity. La'ad u le'olmei olami means forever, for eternity. Many places in the Torah, the Torah warned the Jew not to erase one mitzvah from the Torah, or not to modify the Torah in any way, and the punishment for that is execution. If a Jew adds any word to the Torah based on his own opinion, or erase the letter from the Torah, something like this has to be clean from the nation of Israel. Now, my question to you was, if I'm coming and claiming in front of the, the crowd that Jesus is the Messiah and he has a divine power, and I'm bringing in my book a quote that he warned his students, those were his original followers which are much better than the followers today, 2,000 years later. And he told them, be careful not to ever modify the Torah. And not only that, there's one thing I did not mention, but this is one more sentence that he told them. He told them clearly over there, Everything the rabbis, Hazal, the sages, the Prushim, are telling you, you must do. So we find from here, not only that he admits that the written Torah is the truth of God, the oral Torah, which were passed from generation to generation, are 100% valid, and he warned his, student, his students not to change. Now we have a serious problem. Because as you already directed us that no one is allowed to change or to modify the Torah in any way, and if he does such a thing and teach to others, he will be cursed by God, we come to a series of problems that apply to him himself. Some of the things, first of all, it's like this. He comes and say, through the entire New Testament, he, call, he called himself like a regular human being. And not only that, when one time he said, Son of God, the crowd wanted to stone him to death. And he said, what do you want? All the Jews called the sons of God. As the Torah says, You are the children of God. I chose you from all the nation to be my nation. So I'm only one of them. He did not answer, I am a special son of God, different than all the Jews. I am, what do you want from me? I'm one of them. But I'm nothing different than all the other Jews. That's my understanding from that. So my question to you was, just to make it sharp to the point, the point is instructions and everything you're going to speak in the next hour or the next year here, it's irrelevant because you are not following his instructions. And if he's your hero, and if he's the Messiah, and if your future depends on his hand, how do you not obey his will to his students, his instruction to his students? That was my question, but before I finish the question, I would like to ask you something that relates to it, and this is it.